Hi, welcome to Mining with Mora. I'm your host, Mora. In this series, we talk about different ideas on how to increase productivity and safety and other cool trends in the industry like automation and predictability. We will be doing our annual holiday episode. This year, we have a special surprise for you where our holiday challenge is about innovation. My co-host today is John Torpy, President and General Manager of EpiRock USA. I'm excited, Mora, and I want to welcome two great teams that we have with us. Sure. Are you guys excited? We're excited. We're excited. Yeah. How about you guys? Oh, yeah. One, two, three. There we go. <laughs> we have a special guest co-host, David Robertson, senior lecturer at MIT Sloan School of Business. Come on in, David. Thanks, Mora. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. The rules of the Build Off Challenge will be, your project should embody three concepts, Epiroc, Holiday, and Future. You will have 60 minutes to complete this challenge. Teams will be able to ask David, our expert, one question throughout your build. For the judges' criteria, you will be judged on ingenuity, collaboration, and the story you are presenting. I would advise the teams to uh, tell the story through the minifigures. I actually asked each of the teams to come up with a team name. We came up with Scut Farkas. Yeah, we're the Sugar Plum Fairies. Teams, are you ready? We're ready. 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 Three, two, one, go. <laughs> we all get the chairs. Here we go. Okay. So, Dave, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your history with Lego. I uh, spent five years wandering around the world of Lego as, uh, as I got to know the company. And I was writing a book, of, even though it's a book about the management of innovation, le really learned to appreciate the sophistication and the engineering involved in uh, designing a Lego kit. One of the topics that you've shared with us that we've tried to incorporate into the challenge that they have here is this idea that Lego learned about innovation thrives when the space bird is constrained. One of the things Lego had done before when they tried to develop new products is they would just take the time necessary to make a great product. Now what they do is it's actually much more of a defined time frame. So they say, you have this much time, they will have multiple teams working on very tight time constraints. We've gotten to know each other over the years, and one thing I've learned about you is you always travel with Legos. I do. <laughs> And I, I traveled with some extra Legos that we can give to these teams if they're interested. All right, what do you need, uh, Sean? What do you want? No, I'm done. So we're 15 minutes into the build. Let's start over here with Team Scott Farkas. Tell me a little bit about what you have planned for your build here. All I can say is that it's going to come together beautifully. It's a uh, futuristic themed build. It build. is. It awesome. is. Yes. It's incredible. And holiday as well tied in. Yes. I'm over here with Team Sugar Plum Fairies. In short, we're just kind of showing how Epiroc is growing by using our key values. Well, good luck. Yeah. We're actually going to make this a little more interesting for you guys. At each table, you have this Lego Christmas Advent calendar. So, Dave, randomly, for this team, you get to pick three numbers, and they will have to pick from the Advent calendar and incorporate whatever comes out of those blocks into their build. So 24 is going to be part of both. So I'm looking at 24. But for Scott Farkas, four and 17. And then for Sugar Plum Fairies, 24, door six, and door 19. So it looks like 24, 24 is, Santa. is Santa. This one is a Christmas tree and a piano. Cinnamon, what are you holding? It's a train conductor. Yeah. Jam. Oh. <laughs> How do you think they're going to handle the new pieces we just introduced? I think they're screwed. <laughs> well, you know, any innovation process has unexpected uh, additions or changes or barriers that you hit. The best advice I always uh, give teams is that you need to build to think, not think to build. And that will give you ideas about how you can overcome that challenge and continue uh, toward the goal that you've set for yourself. From an innovation perspective, where does Lego go when they need that external inspiration to help them decide what they're going to focus on? Well, right from the start, they looked outside the company. Um, the colors for the original Lego bricks, the shades were taken from the Dutch modernist painter Mondrian. If you look at those blues and reds and yellows, those are the shades of the original Lego bricks. But Lego has continued to go out to its customers to look for inspiration. They say there's only two groups of honest people in the world, kids and drunks. <laughs> kids will never lie to you about whether something's fun or not. So we're coming up on the 30-minute mark. 
thinking about your build and how we go and try to listen to our customers, there's this uh, idea that you can say, I wish I knew. Kevin, is there something that you wish you knew about our customers that EpiRock could innovate around so that we could be better for our customers? I wish we knew what parts our customers needed before they knew. Oh, wow. So we could innovate that in EpiRock and predict it even before they knew. That would be something really exceptional. Yeah, I think it would do. be pretty awesome. What do you wish you knew about our customers in your current role? What I wish I knew about the customer really is what's going on with them and everything involved to get the 360 degree view of them is what I wish I knew. What about you, Eli? Sometimes it's the most simple things that someone will buy a product for, a digital mm -hmm. product. You have people who won't use Androids because they don't like the way the text looks. Mm -hmm. You have people who prefer iPhones for certain reasons. And from a digital standpoint, uh, I wish I knew those things about the customers. You mentioned with your build, it's very futuristic. Where do you see HR in the future? What I see changing would be um, the type of support that's needed. Uh, everyone has a different, unique experience, and we really need to kind of tailor some of that. Buzzing you in. Sugar pump fairies. How can I help? What do you think is lacking in this, and, and how could we incorporate it as a better element? Well, you've got a nice structure here that you can do a lot with, and so talk to each other about the story and then build the things you need to support the story from here. Okay. Yeah. Uh oh, Sean did it. We need your help. And I think our story and our, our concept is bigger than the time we have left. A lot of moving pieces, but we feel like we, we're running out of time and it's hard to get the asteroid concept. Just yeah. put some pieces together. Yeah. The hands are the search engine of the mind. That if you start building things, you'll start seeing so something emerge something from cool. that that something you can cool. add to your story. Power instead of the rat. We are down to the final minute. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What are your observations? I really like how Scott Farkas <laughs> is thinking outside the box. Yeah, I'm really impressed with what they've come up with in, in one hour. I'm excited to hear the story behind it. Time is up. Hands off the builds. Hi. Hey, plums. <laughs> the moment we've all been waiting for, the final build presentations. Team Sugar Plum Fairies, please present your build. We wanted to incorporate Epiroc by including our three key values, which is commitment, collaboration, and innovation. So on the first layer, we did collaboration. You can see here we included the wolf, the dragon, and the robot. They all come from different backgrounds, but here at Epiroc, we let everyone be included. And back here, also, you see the Fika room, which kind of goes back to our mm -hmm. Swedish um, headquarters um, and heritage. And it's more like where people collaborate as a team or from different teams and work together. We've climbed the ladder, and now we're in 2025. We are in the North Pole, and Santa is operating many different fleets, uh, mm -hmm. both of drill rigs as well as uh, reindeer fleets. And it, it touches on the, the core value of innovation, but we can innovate not just with the technology, uh, but as well as how we set the trend for the future. Now climbing back up into the future, we're here representing our core value of commitment. With commitment, we wanna be committed to our digital solutions mm -hmm. that we've developed, our automation, electrification, decarbonization, all of these things that we've worked towards, we want to make sure that you know, we'll be here for a long time. And so here you can see a Christmas tree, but it also represents the environment, mm -hmm. as well as a futuristic gear here to nice. represent our star. Dave, what do you think of their build? So they used a couple of really sophisticated Lego techniques. The troublemakers in the Lego world are the snot builders, <laughs> S-N-O-T. And that stands for studs not on top. And if you look at their reindeer, it's built with the studs on the lower part. The other part that I thought was really uh, a wonderful building technique was that they tried to figure out how to make a sustainable, energy efficient okay. future for Epiroc. And to build a windmill, they couldn't really find windmill blades so they took Ninjago throwing stars, ninja throwing stars, <laughs> and so extra points for turning weapons into windmills. I'm actually blown away with how you were able to really commit to the Epiroc core values. Really brilliant, well done. Hi, Team Scott Farkas. Hey, Hi. Uh, we cannot wait to hear the story of your build. 
Santa is in the North Pole operating a machine in outer space, and he's looking for rare minerals to help run his sleigh. Many people don't know that Santa's sleigh not only relies on reindeer, but also on rare earth elements. And that's why in the future, Santa and some mineral recovery in general have to go to outer space. So as you can see, not a great structure on the North Pole, but our idea for the innovation was, what can we start out small, low risk, low cost to test? And so what Santa told us to do in our dreams is build the Laser Rock 35. So it's in space, you can see it has boosters. It's actually drilling a meteorite with lasers. So the principle here is to start small, does it work, does it not, get feedback, and then go back and try something new. We want to continue to lead the, the, the industry and in innovation, and so why not reach for the moon? Dave, what do you think? Well, one thing I really like about it is that they weren't constrained by the box here. The reuse of the advent calendar as part of the scene, I thought was, was uh, just a wonderful example of taking the available materials and really doing something fun and innovative with it. Wow, I'm really impressed with what the teams have done. I think both of them did a really nice job. I loved the Sugar Plum Fairies, what they did, and they really stayed true to what Epiroc believes in, which I thought was great. I like them both. They're so different. The future of mining and drilling, uh, you know, of an asteroid right. and con remote controlled, and I thought it was really innovative. Mm -hmm. I'm so torn, so <laughs> yeah, I'm going to make a quick incredible. decision. Teams, thank you. This was thank great. You. We want to thank you, teams, for joining and participating in this year's challenge. Sugar Plum Fairies, some of the things the judges talked about was how you took the Epiroc core values, stayed true to them, and incorporated them onto the three levels to represent today, future, and far future. Well done. Dave, would you comment on Team Scott Farkas? <laughs> the judges really liked the integrated vision you had for the future and the, how innovation is going to continue with Epiroc into the future and how you worked in a holiday theme. The judges were very impressed by that overall vision for, for where Epiroc might go. Yeah. And the winner of the 2022 Lego Challenge, Team Sugar Plum Fairies. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. To watch more Mining with Mora videos, please subscribe to EpiRock USA YouTube channel. Welcome to today's show, which is a... Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you. You know what? It's a train conductor. Oh, oh. Okay. Okay. express. Yes. Oh, and you know what? I don't think it's a conductor. It looks like it's holding a big donut. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go first. Yeah, go ahead, John. All right. Teams, <laughs> Team Scott Farkas, if you can successfully spell the name of your team, you will win this competition. <laughs> I can't spell it. <laughs> Start. Nice. <laughs> This looks close enough oh, like an asteroid that oh, you just explained. You okay. <laughs> okay, quiet on set. I just made that up. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, you win the award for best use of farm animals in space. Yeah. 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 No pig was harmed. Yeah. Yeah. No pigs were harmed. <laughs> it's all ad lib. I mean, it's clear. I see what you guys are doing here. And it is to get seed money from Elon Musk. Hashtag Elon Musk. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs>